Curious about the journey of Star Trek The Next Generation? Get ready for a ride full of surprises from funny moments to shocking revelations. Do you have a favorite memory from the show? Or maybe there's something interesting you want to know. Stick around as we explore the show's highlights. And don't forget to share your own stories in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you. Let's dive into the world of the next generation together. One person enjoys watching Star Trek The Next Generation because it helps them relax and think. They watch it at night to unwind. But someone else doesn't like the show. They think it's boring and has too many bright colors from the 1960s. Despite these different views, many people like the show because of its great actors, interesting stories, and exciting space adventures. They think it's better than the original series, both in how it looks and how smart it is. Some people don't like one of the characters, Wesley Crusher, because they think he's too perfect and better than everyone else. But even with these criticisms, some people still enjoy watching the show. They like how it looks and how the crew gets along, even though the dialogue can be cheesy and the plots can be predictable. But they think the show makes them think and deals with important issues. Overall, people have different opinions about Star Trek The Next Generation, but many think it's a good show despite its flaws. Star Trek The Next Generation, debuting in 1987, brought forth significant milestones and distinctive aspects. One notable contributor to the series was Whoopi Goldberg, the second African-American woman to receive an Academy Award after Hattie McDaniel. Goldberg's involvement added a layer of diversity to the show. The Ferengi, a prominent alien species in the series, were crafted with inspiration from stereotypical lawyers. This portrayal manifested through their perpetual engagement in deals, strict adherence to contract laws, an overarching focus on financial matters, and a noticeable disdain for women. The Ferengi's characteristics reflected a satirical take on certain societal stereotypes. Directorial roles played a part in shaping the Star Trek narrative, with both Jonathan Frakes and Leonard Nimoy leaving their mark. Both actors turned directors helmed two Star Trek movies, one of which in each case was centered around a time travel narrative. Additionally, both Frakes and Nimoy shared the distinction of being best known for their roles as the first officer of the USS Enterprise in their respective Star Trek series and films. In essence, Star Trek The Next Generation, with its diverse cast and creative choices, stands as a notable entry in the Star Trek franchise, making its mark in the world of science fiction television. The TV show, Happening in the Future, follows the USS Enterprise led by Captain John Luke Picard as it explores space. It introduces different alien species and cultures in the Star Trek world, focusing on diplomacy, discovery, and tough choices. One cool thing is how the series connects to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This city is famous for history and also for being the birthplace of Robert Picaro, who starred in another Star Trek series called Star Trek Voyager, starting in 1995. The Learning Center in the series universe, Starfleet Academy, has a motto from the stars, knowledge. This saying is like a salute to the United States Navy's motto from the sea knowledge, showing they took inspiration from naval traditions. Also, it's like the Apollo 13 mission's emblem from the moon, knowledge, showing the thirst for learning beyond our planet. In a more recent story, James Cromwell, who was in the series, made news in February 2013. He got arrested for causing trouble at a University of Wisconsin meeting, protesting against how animals were treated on campus. This shows his strong support for animal rights, which he continued to speak up for, like when he got kicked out of a New York event in December 2015 for loudly disagreeing with an energy company. This series has had a big impact on science fiction and pop culture, inspiring lots of other shows, movies, and books. It keeps sparking conversations about science, morals, and the idea of humans exploring space. Star Trek The Next Generation co-starred with René Auberjonois in six different productions spanning various years. Among these were Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Aladdin, The Savage Dragon, Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys, and Fallout New Vegas. Out of the four Star Trek series, he holds the record as the oldest actor to portray a captain in the first build starring role. He was between 47 and 54 years old during the entire series. The series featured two-part arcs such as The Best of Both Worlds and Unification, which included scenes of wrecked and abandoned starships. These scenes used study models originally considered for use in Star Trek The Motion Picture and Star Trek III The Search for Spock. Some of the wrecked ships were constructed through kit bashing, which involves quickly assembling starship parts from various models. Marina Cities, portraying Deanna Troy, wore dark contact lenses due to the producer's decision, despite her natural green eyes. She stands among six actresses who have achieved an EGOT, 
including Helen Hayes, Rita Moreno, Audrey Hepburn, Whoopi Goldberg, Jennifer Hudson, and Viola Davis. Michael Dorn played Lieutenant Lieutenant Commander Worf across four series Star Trek The Next Generation, Webster, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Family Guy. Paramount Pictures hesitated to make a new Star Trek TV series at first because they were worried it might make people less interested in the Star Trek movies. But later on, they started to think it was a good idea. They had discussions about how to make the show fresh and interesting. One idea was to change Dr. Crusher's family by adding a daughter named Leslie instead of her son Wesley. This got the attention of the creative team because they thought it could add something new to the characters and stories. When they started casting actors for the show, many people tried out for important roles. Some of them were Kevin Peter Hall, Mark Lindsay Chapman, Eric Meniak, and Kelvin Hanyi. They all really wanted to be part of Star Trek. The role of Commander Data was especially popular, and each actor had their own way of playing the android character. But in the end, Eric Meniak got noticed for another role, not Data. He ended up playing a character called the Traveler, who appeared in the series from time to time. While they were figuring all of this out, the creators were forming their vision for Star Trek The Next Generation. They wanted to keep some things from the old Star Trek, but also add new ideas. They worked together to create a show that they hoped would be exciting and leave a strong impression on people who watched it. Star Trek The Next Generation, which debuted in September 1987, introduced several noteworthy elements throughout its run. One of these is the visor, short for visual instrument and sensory organ replacement, a device worn by Geordie LaForge. While this term is found in printed materials, it's never spoken on screen. The series also featured a distinctive display in the Enterprise D's observation lounge. Initially, this display showcased scale sculptures of six previous Earth vessels named USS Enterprise. However, from the beginning until the end of season four, this display changed to a standard wall without explanation. It wasn't until Star Trek First Contact that a glass-covered display in the Enterprise E's observation lounge featured seven golden models of the previous Enterprises. The original display briefly reappeared in the final episode's past timeline. Interestingly, CBS ceased reruns of T.J. Hooker in September 1987, the same month Star Trek The Next Generation premiered. The Enterprise crew often access hidden ship mechanisms by removing Mies panels from the walls, named after set decorator Jim Mies. These panels are a nod to the original series Jeffries Tubes, named after prop master Walter M. Jeffries. He, along with Jonathan Frakes, Marina Cities, Michael Dorn, Comini, and Jeffrey Combs, appeared in the finales of two different Star Trek series, Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Enterprise. He is the only regular cast member from the series to share scenes with all three original Star Trek series cast members who appeared on the show DeForest Kelly, Leonard Nimoy, and James Doohan.